G'day, I'm Goose and welcome to Scoop! This week on the show, Microsoft unveils some new gear to strap to your face, Zelda could possibly be going mobile, and someone finally escaped the maze of doom! All that, plus I'm joined by Rad for a Tetris Masterclass. Cue the music! Ah! Ah! Oh no. Ah! <laughs> Wow, what a combo! All right, first up, the news. Microsoft has unveiled a bunch of new mixed reality hardware at their most recent build conference. What's mixed reality, you ask? A good question. It's essentially virtual reality, but merged with elements from actual reality. The new tech will offer inside-out tracking, meaning that the headset itself will track your controllers and movements without the need to set up external sensors. I've got mixed feelings about it. And next up, the Wall Street Journal is reporting that Nintendo is apparently working on a Legend of Zelda game for smartphones. The report was light on details about the actual game, but did say it's currently planned for release after the mobile version of Animal Crossing comes out later this year. <gasps> the whole of Hyrule in my pocket? Yes, please. And finally, some of you may remember a story we reported on earlier this year about a diabolical maze that was created in Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. It seemed like no AI characters would ever find the exit. But now, after 263 in-game years, a guest named Regina has made it out alive. Creator Rogue Leader 23 also released this black and white layout of the maze, so if you want to, you can have a go at it yourself. Yeah, I'm feeling lost just looking at it. Well, that's the news for this week. Oh, hear that? Masterclass is in session. I'm joined now on the Scoop Couch by Rad, who's... Oh, Rad? Rad! Rad! I'm needed in the scoop room! Ah. ah! Rad, there you are. Here I am. Welcome to the Masterclass Couch. How are you? Ready for uh, some Masterclass and... Excellent. Well, the game of choice today is Puyo Puyo Tetris, which is a spin on the Tetris game by blending it with another puzzle game called Puyo Puyo. Now, have you played either of those? Um, I've played Baku Baku, which is similar to Puyo Puyo, and I've played Tetris spin-offs before. Well, I think a lot of people have played Tetris. It's a game very dear to my heart. In fact, it may have been one of the first games I ever played on the original Game Boy. Oh, I'm not that old. Oh, ouch. Okay. Okay, well, uh, it's why I consider myself a bit of an expert on the game, so I thought what we might do today is jump in and just try some pure Tetris, and I'll give you some tips uh, that maybe can help us get a pretty serious score. I'll try and set a score, and then if you can beat that, well, then you are the master of Tetris. Oh, I look forward to beating your score, then. Ah, ambitious. That's what I like to hear. All right, let's dive in, try our hands, a little bit of Tetris. Mm. All right, so we're diving into basic Tetris, which the rules are blocks fall from above and you need to stack them and you need to make sure that you clear lines by filling them with blocks. You know that already. Yeah, simple. Okay. But the tips are, number one, always be Tetrisen. What? Exactly. Now, the thing is, when you actually manage to score a huge block of lines, I think it might be one, two, three, four, four or five, it's called a Tetris, which is why the game is called Tetris. I don't know, it's called a Tetris. Actually, I'm not sure if that's true, but it is what they call it in the game. <laughs> and so to do that, the thing you want to do is you want to build up a whole series of blocks with one thin line. So what I'll do is I'll drop a thin block over here. What's he doing? Madness. No, no, I'm leaving room to build up the whole screen and then drop one thin block in there. Tetris. I don't like how you play this game. It's, it's a risky very, way to play, Rad. It's dicey. It is dicey. Now, the second tip is to store your blocks. Now, what the game lets you actually do is hold a piece. So now we have that thin block I was talking about. But we you, can... You've got a gap there. Okay, we do have a gap there. That's a good point. We'll fill that gap. <laughs> because you're, you're doing... Ah, the master becomes the masty. Well, you're remembering tip number one, always be tetris -in. But now when we get this thin block here, don't pay attention to that, we can pull the trigger and we store that block in yep. the top left, which means we can continue continue to keep building up our screen, and when we're ready to use it, we can drop it in. That's a so cool little feature. I'm going to keep doing that, and I'm going to fill the blocks up here, and we're going to see how... Oh no, okay, a couple little mistakes <laughs> along the way, that's part of Tetris. Tip number three, you want to maximise your combos. So what we're going to do is drop that first block in, we're going to get a Tetris, then we're going to use that stored block and drop it in straight afterwards, and that's going to give us a combo with our score. So, as you see, number one... Tetris. Then we pull the trigger again, enabling our thin block, in again, and wasn't quite another Tetris, but we, we did get a combo because we had gaps in there. So uh, by doing that, you can rack up some pretty big combos and get some pretty good scores, but it does get risky. You're making holes. It's okay, it's okay, Rad. What you've got to do is invest in the long-term block droppage later on. Uh. Yeah, I don't know if those are real terms, but what it means is that <laughs> when you've got a chance to clear the board, do you want to take it? Or do you want to leave it and you want to uh, try and get that bigger combo? You want to take it. No, you, you want, want to get the bigger combo. Every time. Are you not listening to the tips, Rad? Well, I, I don't like I don't like your gaps. 
Okay, so as I'm playing, you may notice that a few of the blocks are very quickly dropping into place. And that's because my fourth and final tip is using the quick drop. And what that actually means is by flicking the thumbstick up, you instantly move the block all the way to the bottom. Now, why would you do this, Rad? Because it makes the game faster. faster and more stressful, but it does mean if you're competing later on, you get better at racking up that high score quicker and you can then disrupt the other player. Because if you just wait for the block to fall, it takes a while. Yeah. And you quick drop. And you Tetris as well. Do you look at what block's coming up next for you? Do you I take try that to. Into account? I try to use my peripheral vision and you can see which colour is coming up. And after right. you play long enough, you remember which colour is which. So, I mean, for example, if I was to not look at the screen and you were to ask me... Yellow. Uh, yellow is uh, a square. <laughs> uh, dark blue. Dark blue is, a, is an, uh, it's an L shape that looks like that. That way. It's that yes, way. it is. Right? Yeah. Purple. Purple. Purple is um, a T. Yes. And and you've lost. Have I? Oh no! <laughs> All right. Well played. Hmm. Okay. So there's my score down the bottom, which is roughly three thousand four hundred and fifty. So um, I'm going to give you a chance, Red. And oh, that's the only score I have to beat. That's uh, great. Three thousand four hundred and fifty-eight. So uh, using those tips, see if you can top that score. Yeah. Let's let's go. Take it away, Rad. So what was in tip number one? Uh, build a big. Big, big tower, big tower to Tetris. Yes, yes. It was always be Tetris. <laughs> always be Tetrising. Like Bajan, uh, he didn't pay attention to any of my tips held last time. Oh no! Okay, okay. Oh no, that's fine. No, so you're holding the long block, so that's good. So, and using the quick drop, but maybe just uh, ease up. So now you've got nowhere to put that, so maybe use that long block, perfect, and set up the wall. Yes. So we're investing in that Tetris move. Good, good, Rad. Okay, now the trick is don't use it yet. Store it. Yes. Talk me through. What are you seeing here? Concentration. You're concentrating. And That's good. That is also important. So we've got another. I really want to beat your score. You've got a long block coming in about four moves. So when you do, oh no, you've, you're going to use nah, this one already. That one, don't drop. Oh, okay. Uh, no, you don't want to make a hole. I would use that long piece and drop him in there. Invest in the long-term Tetris, right? Yep, yeah. Yeah. Yep. You, good. Sure. With our powers combined, we are one mediocre Tetris player. Ooh, that's a risky one. That's a ri You've got the left side of the board to work with, we that's remember, okay. Remember, you got to risk it for the biscuit. I'm going right. to drop it. You should it's have stored him. Oh. No, it's too risky. It's too risky. So it's still good. You're getting a really good score. But the thing is, you're only getting a one-times combo. Sometimes it's good to see what piece you're going to swap out to if you store one. Because sometimes yeah. you can end up with a piece you don't want. Either. Oh, no! Oh, Rad. Oh, no. That's oh. a serious gap there. Look, forget what's underneath. Just invest in what's happening above. You've got it. You've got it. There's a hole right there. There's a hole right there. Oh, oh, yep, oh, yep, oh, yep. oh Nice. Oh. Always feels good when it fits just right, doesn't yeah. it? See, I'm not sure if my tip about quick drops is a good tip because you kind of get really hooked on doing it and then you'll make a quick mistake. Yeah. I don't think Speed you, round. I don't think go you around, want go. to win. No, you've got a long piece coming up in two moves. So you can do this. You can do this. Here it is, long piece. Down the side, down the side. Not quite a Tetris. But now you've... Ooh. I'm so stressed. It's all right, Rad. It's all right, Rad. Oh, no, you've already beaten my score. Ah, Tetris. That's not how it winner, works. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Oh, this is a risky way to play. Oh, no! Crap. <laughs> <laughs> And there we go. Okay, that's a pretty good score. 4,336. You. you did best my score. Congratulations. I that passed the crown on to you. You were in teaching mode, so you were handicapped slightly. That's true. I think I was actually not looking at the screen during my round. Not exactly the best test. You were trying to show off. I was uh, showing off. That's pretty much it. Mm. But you were doing really well. I think you, you took all my tips to heart. It's been a while since you played Tetris. Is it as fun as you remember? Yeah, it is. It's, it's got that nice kind of stressful feel to it and <laughs> you can go through it quite quickly. So yeah, it's good. It's really easy to jump back into another game and just keep playing and keep playing. But there are a heap of game modes in Puyo Puyo Tetris and we'll be covering all of them in our full review on Spawn Point next week. But that's the end of the Masterclass. And Rad, I believe it is time for me to beat your score now. Yeah, let's go ahead. I'd like to see you try. I can do it blindfolded. No, I didn't actually. Oh, purple. No. Uh, purple is a T. Yeah, but where are you going to put it? Oh, that's a good question. No, I it's gone. No it's idea. too late. No, no. I uh, just... Long stick. Oh, no. I should have stored that one. Oh, it's too late. I'm just going to wildly put him down. You're not going to beat my score. Look at this. I've done much better than you. Have I even got a line yet? No. No. You're going to. You're, you're done. Yeah. Ah! But what a beautiful tower you built. I don't think that's the point of the game. Hmm. hmm, fine Tetris skills there, Rad, but I'll get that score one day. Before we finish up today, it is art appreciation time. And we have this delightful illustration sent in by five-year-old Erin. Fantastic use of line work there. Let's get that straight up on the wall. Remember, if you've got some artwork you'd like to see up on the wall, you can send it in to one of these addresses. And while you're feeling creative, why not send in a video question to ask Spawn Point? In fact, we've whipped up this handy dandy video to show you how. 
Hi there, gamers. Trying to record a video for Ask Spawn Point? <laughs> well, that's swell. But wait a second. Oh dear, you're doing it all wrong. That's okay, though. Here's just a few simple tips to take you from B-movie to blockbuster. First things first, pre-production. No great film starts shooting without a script, so why not write out your question and make sure you know what you want to say. What's that? You've got your lines memorised already? Well, that's the way, gamers. Next up, find a location. A nice setting is a bonus, but good lighting makes all the difference, so find somewhere where you can really shine. No, that's a cupboard, Barjo. Ah, there you go. Much better. Now let's set up your camera. No, no, not portrait, landscape. That's right, you don't see tall screen TVs, do you? So shoot in widescreen. Okay, it's time to hit record and make some magic. Hmm, come on gamers, speak up. If we can't hear you, how can we answer you? There, that's better. Have as many takes as you like until you get it just right. And cut, it's a masterpiece. But before you send it in, make sure you watch it back and see if you're happy with it. While you're at it, why not get an audience? Go grab your grown-ups and show them your work. You'll need them around for this next bit anyway. Yes, that's right. You'll need to ask them if it's okay for you to send us your video. If you don't check with them, we can't use your video. There! Now you're done. All that's left is to go to our website. Go here and submit it. Before you know it, you'll be the next big thing on the television. Good work, gamers. Well, that's the scoop for this week. Until next time, goose out. Oh, the music's back. I mean, you can hear it too, right? It's not just me. Makes me want to arrange things. This goes up here. Ooh.